I am undead, Matt. <laughs> it is once again Halloween, which means I'm bringing you the career of some of the most fiendish ghouls. And today, I'm talking about the original, the OG, the shape. Halloween movies! <laughs> Number 10 Halloween Resurrection. Why are all sequels named Resurrection Terrible? I don't know. But Rob Zombie was once asked why he remade Halloween even though he hates horror remakes, and one of his reasons is that anything that he does to this franchise can't be worse than what's already been done to it, and I can't help but think that this is the movie he was talking about. Halloween Resurrection is terrible. None of the characters are enjoyable, none of the characters are likable, it's just all cheesy late 90s horror cliches and it is annoying. There's nothing really fun about it and they even add a cliche that I hate that does pop up in horror movies a lot and that is add a reality show aspect to it and I just do not care for it whatsoever. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Number nine, Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers. So this movie was made in reaction to the fact that everyone hated that Michael Myers wasn't in Halloween three, which we'll get to later. Uh, but Return of Michael Myers spent so much time reminding you that Michael Myers is back that they forgot to actually make an interesting story and really just made a bland, generic slasher movie. Uh, the only thing of note that it really does is it kicks off what's known as the Thorn Trilogy, which is uh, this trilogy of three movies of four, five, and six. Uh, that all connected with a uh, thorn conspiracy, which we'll probably get into more later. But overall with this movie, I just can't remember what happened in it. It's just very generic and bland and remarkably unremarkable and generally is one of the sequels you can skip. So I already talked about the Halloween remakes in my video about movies I enjoy that everyone else seems to hate. And I kind of get why people don't like this one. A lot of the crazy redneck screaming parts in the beginning can be very annoying. But I find once it gets past that and gets into the actual remake part, it is very enjoyable and it fits very well with Rob Zombie's shooting style. As well as it has a fantastic cast and the characters you really feel for and you want to see them survive. These are characters that you enjoy being around and that is a lot stronger than having a bunch of assholes that you hope die. And this is done really well in that sense. So once you get to the actual remake, I find this one quite enjoyable, but I understand everyone's hate for it and I can see losing a lot of the mystery of Michael Myers' past can be deflating to the series and so that's why I put it lower on this list. Done to obsess on the construction of these primitive masks. It is the rare occasion that he will allow himself to be seen without one of these. Only during the weekly visits from his mother does he show brief glimpses of the boy. Number 7, Halloween 2, 2009. So this is another one I get why people don't like it. 
but it's so bad in a very fascinating way for me. Uh, it's just so batshit insane with so many weird elements going on that I just can't help but just be fascinated by it. And when I really think about it, it's probably because it's held up once again by just a fantastic cast. Scout Taylor Compton and Brie Grant are just fantastic in this movie, and all the other supporting cast just make this a very visceral, real movie that grounds some of the crazy stuff that goes on. Also, there's a hate in Michael Myers in this movie that you don't see in any of the other Halloween movies, which is a very awesome turn. He's no longer robotic. He hates in this movie and I really like that uh, and it's just something different that I had never seen in any of the other Halloween movies which makes it stand out and a little bit more interesting to me. That being said it is batshit insane with some really crazy nonsensical moments going on but again I can't help but be fascinated by it. You, you. Number 6, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So here we are, the bastard child of the Halloween movies. Somewhere there's an alternate dimension where people didn't lose their minds that Michael Myers wasn't in Halloween 3, and it continued on as an anthology series, and the series was better for it. But yes, if you weren't in the know, after Michael Myers was decidedly dead in Halloween 2, they decided to take the franchise in an anthology way, where each movie wouldn't necessarily relate to any previous movies and just be about things that happen on Halloween. And this one does that very well. It's a story about bringing witchcraft back to Halloween, and you know, a lot of cult stuff, and a lot of really cool, interesting things, and some awesome effects. As well as they kill a freaking kid in it, which is something you don't see in many horror movies. But anyways, the biggest complaint I hear about this movie is that Michael Myers isn't in it. And if you just accept that fact and watch this movie with fresh eyes, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. It is a very enjoyable, creepy horror movie. <laughs> Number 5, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. So I think this is one of the best Halloween movies that's a basic slasher movie. Uh, it is the second in the Thorn trilogy, taking place right after the events of Halloween 4, but I think they just do it a lot better than 4 did. Uh, the characters are developed a lot more, and the atmosphere is a lot more creepy. And Halloween movies, when they are at their best, are all about atmosphere. And this one builds on a dark, interesting atmosphere, as well as building more on the mythos of the Myers family and why Michael is the way he is. I find this one uh, very enjoyable, but of course, where it's at on the list is because it is a little bit more generic than some of the upcoming movies. You know, we have enough slasher movies, but this one again, for just being a slasher movie, is one of the better ones. <laughs> So this movie basically works as an alternate Halloween 3, basically taking place 20 years after the original Halloween 2 and ignoring all in-between sequels. Now outside of it having a really dumb name of Halloween H2O and ignoring sequels, which is a huge pet peeve of mine, it is serviceable as a solid movie. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis stepping back in the role of Laurie Strode is fantastic and she dives right into it. She doesn't play play it down like it's below her. She really steps right back into that role and makes it fantastic. And deals with a lot of things like the PTSD that she would go through of surviving that Halloween night and a lot of the fears that go along with it. And Michael coming in has some amazing action scenes in this 
as well as some really good solid moments and a, a fair amount of the characters are very interesting as well. Now it does fall into a few of the trappings of the late 90s early 2000s horror movies and as you can see it looks a lot like Scream. But in the end it serves its own right as a solid entry into the Halloween franchise and I quite enjoy this one. So this one is notorious for having all sorts of production issues and behind the scenes shenanigans, but the end result for me is a very solid movie. Like I said before, Halloween when it's at its best is all about atmosphere, and this one creates such a creepy dreamlike atmosphere that I just really enjoy. As well as this has baby Paul Rudd in it, and who doesn't love baby Paul Rudd? But in the end, uh, this movie really dives into the origin of Michael Myers and the fact that the Myers family is cursed and is the culmination of the Thorn trilogy and my personal favorite of that trilogy as well as Donald Pleasant's last movie role ever. But I really like this movie. Again, it has such a creepy atmosphere. I just really enjoy it and I think it's one of the best Halloween movies that of course gets ignored by the other movies later, but nah, that's, a, that's for another day. So yes, this is my favorite Halloween sequel, and in my opinion, the only necessary Halloween sequel. This takes place directly after the events of the first Halloween movie and deals with the aftermath of that night, with Laurie going to the hospital and Dr. Loomis still trying to hunt down Michael Myers. Now I say this is the only necessary one because really you can enjoy the first Halloween movie as a standalone movie, but if you are really curious to see what else happens with these characters, this is the only one you really need to see with the only real continuation of the original Halloween story. It has a great creepy atmosphere and it does up the body count a lot and it has some great kills, but I feel this one relates the most to the first movie and keeps the same feel and mythos of the original movie. Wait, Laurie! <laughs> Number one, Halloween. Of course the original Halloween movie is going to be at the top of the list. It is a gold standard classic horror movie and kicked off the entire slasher genre. John Carpenter's direction and score to this movie are just iconic and masterful and is almost a perfect horror movie. After so many uh, copycats and people just taking hold of the slasher genre and driving it into the ground. We forget how integral and interesting and dark this movie is, and I still enjoy it on watches today. And I'll even go out of my way to see it in theaters whenever I can. But it's such a well put together, just perfect movie with perfect atmosphere, perfect characters. Like, this is what a slasher movie should be. And, of course, the best Halloween movie is the first Halloween movie. What's the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, it was. So that was the career of Michael Myers. Many ups and many downs. 
Pops. He has been very quiet for the last decade, so it might be time for Michael to strike again. I am Undead Matt, and I will see you next Halloween. Well, actually, I got a show that I'm doing every month now, so I guess I'll see you next month. <laughs> yes. <laughs>